Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS, a show where I talk about building things with JavaScript. In today's episode, I want to talk about using Elasticsearch with Node.js. Um, so if you're not familiar, Elasticsearch is a pretty powerful tool uh, and on its own, uh, basically a search and analytics engine that works very well with an incredibly huge uh, databases. And uh, you've probably heard about it. There's basically two use cases. Uh, use case number one is uh, collecting logs and analyzing them. And use case number two is quickly searching over huge collections of um, text-based information, right? So Elasticsearch itself is a Lucene-based uh, tool. Uh, so Lucene in this case is a Java-based indexing and search technology. You can uh, go ahead and try it yourself. I mean, it's pretty easy to use actually. And there's a competing product uh, that is also from Apache Foundation called Solar which also works pretty well. But in this case, we're not going to be looking at solar, we're going to be looking at Elasticsearch, which is, um, I guess, a bit more widespread in this, case, right? So um, there, are, as I said, there are two typical use cases that you would go uh, using Elasticsearch. First one is uh, using it for logging, which is uh, also called Elastic Stack which typically uses Kibana and Logstash for um, Kibana, in this case, for visualizing because it's a UI and Logstash for collecting logs. And the second use case is search, which basically uh, involves collecting data from somewhere and putting it into Elasticsearch, letting it index it and then searching over that index uh, very quickly. Right. So uh, talking about Elastic Stack, this is basically the main product I think Elastic sells right now. And uh, obviously there are like open source versions and all this stuff. Uh, it includes uh, basically Elasticsearch, Kibana and Logstash, but there are also additional things that you can plug in. Like for example, they now have this Beats, which is uh, lightweight data shippers that you can embed into your app that will do the data collection for you essentially. So they can, uh, you know, collect log files, metrics, networking data, whatever. Uh, I won't be talking about those because I haven't used them myself and never had any need to. So we're going to be talking specifically about uh, Elastic Stack that is purely Elasticsearch, Kibana, Logstash, and then your Node.js app that sends logs, right? So uh, this repo again on the GitHub as usual, be the next with JS slash Elasticsearch minus tutorial. The link will be in the video description. We're going to go ahead and open the VS code here. I think I would need to make it larger. Yes, we are a bit small. And here's our elastic stack, right? So first of all, we need to start our elastic stack. Uh, you typically do this with Docker Compose. Um, this is usually done on a separate machine within your network, somewhere that you know where you can send the logs basically. In our case, uh, since we're trying it out, we're gonna be doing it locally, obviously. So I'm gonna map the ports, the log host to be able to access them. Um, this Docker Compose is a uh, simpler version of the official elastic stack docker so i'm going to put the link in the description once again uh, and for all the pages that are already closed as well so why the hell not um, so this is the official uh, stack docker uh, it's a docker compose file along with some additional scripts and configs that uh, start stuff uh, in this case an official case it actually includes the uh, beats as well but i simplified it and removed bunch of stuff because basically we don't need it. So in this case, it only requires um, Elasticsearch, Kibana, Logstash, and then there's setup Logstash and setup Kibana scripts that are executed once. So once we go into Elastic Stack and we do Docker compose up, it will uh, start the whole stack and we should be able to navigate to port uh, 9 uh, 9200, no wait, I'm lying, 5601 to see the Kibana interface. So I'm gonna go here and it's not yet started. Um, so bear in mind, all of this software is written in Java. So it does take uh, some time to start up. So it might not be as fast, especially if you're using it locally. There we go. I think Kibana is not started, uh, not yet, come on. Logstash, uh, we got some error going on, but I think, uh, here's the question. Sometimes it, for whatever reason, doesn't actually start properly. Um, that's one of the problems of using the setup scripts instead of just having proper images. Okay, only setup things are exited. I think our main uh, services are running fine. There we go. There's our Kibana. So as you can see here right now, we have our um, XPack Kibana here with welcoming screen and everything. We need to configure an index pattern, but uh, we can't actually 
do anything because there's no data, right? So what we have to do here is we have to um, execute our node script that will put the data inside of the log stash that will on its own transform it and put it into the Elasticsearch. So the you could directly write it to log stash, but oh, I'm sorry, to Elasticsearch, but log stash is actually pretty powerful tool for log collection. Uh, and if we look at the config, you define input. In our case, the input is just a TCP port and you just use a TCP socket to push the logs into it. Then you can actually filter stuff and modify it after it. So this is the main powerful like part of the log stash. So you can transform messages even if they are not in a format that you want it to be and so on and so forth. And then log stash outputs them into Elasticsearch that we configured from the Docker Compose, right? So in this case, our um, index script is quite trivial. We have the Pinot logger that just logs to console. And then uh, Pinot has this Pinot socket package that basically can uh, pipe the output of Pinot to any socket. So if I run npm start right now, it will actually pipe those. So it will show the logs to us, but it will also pipe them to um, Elasticsearch. And then right now, if we refresh it, you can see that we can configure the pattern. So I think we can create it by timestamp because why not? We will have that and now we can go to the discover tab and actually see all our, so in this case, we only have two. So in this case, uh, you see we have a message, host name, timestamp, port, level, uh, version, um, process ID, time and message, right? So you might not need all of that. So let's say we want to see message and let's say we want to see time is by default. Yeah, so there you go. Maybe we want to see level as well, right? So in this case, message, for example, is uh, complete. I guess we don't really need message. We need M MSG, right? So this is the, me yeah, there you go. Okay, another cool thing is that um, you can actually say that you want it to auto refresh. And if I rerun our script, obviously it's gonna push two of the same logs. But if we wait for a couple of seconds, uh, okay, I forgot to turn it on, there we go. So basically we'll auto refresh every five seconds and you will actually see the uh, incoming logs in, well, not really real time, but you know, pretty close. Every five seconds is generally enough. So the cool part is that you can actually monitor errors and so on and so forth. You also have access to visualizations. So you can create your own visualizations with areas, heat maps, bars, whatever. There's like a billion of ways to visualize the data here which makes Kibana, Elasticsearch and uh, Logstash very powerful tools. And even you know, without Logstash, you can still do a lot with Kibana and um, Elasticsearch. Right, so um, talking about logging, um, let me kill that. So in this case, we used Pino, right? Which has this uh, transports. And in case of Pino, all the transports are external. So you have to like pipe it, which is not always convenient, right? Uh, other logging systems like Vincent, for example, have um, integrated transports. Like for example, here you have uh, log stash civilization format and log stash transport, which you can just define at the, uh, where, where was the example? There you go. So when you create a logger, you define transports and here can be a transport that basically says, here's my log stash instance, just send everything to console and to log stash. So you can uh, basically, you know, use your logger as usual in the app, but logs will end up in the Elasticsearch Kibana stack. So that's really nice. Right, okay, this is the first case. Um, let me remove them. So we have a clear Docker, right? Yep, good, okay. So the second case is search, right? So um, it, it's a pretty typical task. You have a large database of whatever it is and you want to search over it. So I don't think there's any use of in opening that. Uh, so in this case, um, since we needed some database, uh, there is a um, tool called, or not a tool, I guess, repository called OSM Names, which takes open street maps and creates a full text search database with ranked entities uh, and boxes and coordinates from the names within the open street map. So you can actually, you know, throw in an address or a city name or a country name and get back the full information. It's very, very simple. The uh, data itself is in um, TSV files. So it's a table uh, tab separated uh, entries, quite easy to parse. And uh, what we basically do, uh, we take this, we, we have this search. So you have this uh, planet latest uh, 100K. So basically they provide two things, two files. The first one is geonames that is uh, 1.33 gigabyte of size 
compressed, so it's really, really big. And the other one is this 100k geo names, which is just 100,000 names. I think it's, um, I don't remember how big is it, but it wasn't too big, right? It's uh, like 29 megs, so it's not big. There you go. Okay, and uh, basically you have um, header, and then each row is one of the things, right? So France, United States of America, Germany, and so on and so forth. So we, um, what I did is I write two scripts. First one is import script. So as you can see here, it connects to the Elasticsearch. It pings it just to make sure that it's alive. It creates the index if needed. Uh, if not, then you know if it exists, we don't care. If there's an error, obviously we throw it. And then uh, because you cannot really like, if, if we're gonna be working with this like 29 megs file, then sure, we could load it, the whole file in the memory and that will work, but that's not very nice. And if you try to do that with that 1.33 gig file, obviously that's not gonna work. So we're gonna write the proper parser from the beginning. We're gonna stream it. So we create the read stream and pipe it through the CSV uh, parser, which is a stream parser with a separator slash T, which is the tabulation separator within the TSV files, right? And then I wrap it into the Highland JS, which is a very handy library uh, that adds Lodash like uh, methods to streams. So you can actually map, batch, reduce, and so on and so forth all your streams. So in this case, I map the data into uh, I do a bunch of things. So first of all, alternative names uh, in this TSV file is just a string. I split it by comma so that we have array over which we can easily search. And then I parse the um, uh, latitude, longitude, and rank and importance, which are floats and ints, so that we can actually sort by them within Elasticsearch because sorting over strings doesn't really work well. And then I map it to a um, structure that is required for batch insert within the Elasticsearch. So you need to have this sort of index definition first and then the data you want to insert. And then I batch it uh, to 100 batches because you know it's more efficient to insert in batches. Uh, then once we batch comes in, we pause the stream to wait a bit and to not basically try to insert 200 million times at a time, which you know it can because file systems are fast and uh, databases are not as fast. So we create this body, we reduce it to one flat array because this is gonna be array of arrays, right? So we reduce it to one array and set this as a body. Uh, bump index just to know where we are and resume the stream. Quite easy, right? Nothing really fancy here. And then we say done and exit. So very simple script that actually works pretty reliably even for the large uh, files like this, because this is pretty much what I did for uh, one of the projects we did at work. Right, now the search part. Search part is actually even simpler. So we again connect, ping the server to make sure it's live. We define the query, in this case it's just London. And uh, now comes the interesting part. So first of all, we define, uh, so we say, okay, we say we want to search over the OSM index, we want to search by type place. Uh, we define type over here. I kind of missed it, but uh, here you go. We define the type and index, obviously. Uh, types are arbitrary. You can basically store multiple types in one index, I believe. Uh, but in this case, we only have one type, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, right, then we send the body. Body is basically defines how the query should work, right? So first of all, we define sorting. Uh, so we want to sort it first by the place rank descending and then by importance descending. So that we actually get when we try, when we search for London, for example, we actually got the London in uh, Great Britain, not London in New Zealand, for example, because there's a bunch of Londons all over the world. And uh, we don't really want random one, right? So we want actually the most important one, uh, the most visited place and so on and so forth. And this is what ensures it. So once again, notice this num, the ones that we parse. So if you would try to search by, uh, to sort by strings, you will get an error here. Then we'll write the query. Uh, so the query is, uh, starts with Boolean. So basically it says that uh, it should, and then there's an array of conditions. So first of all, it should match name exactly, right? So we say, okay, Name should be exact query. Uh, but we also say that it might match alternative names. So uh, I believe this is actually not quite, uh, so in this case, we say that both of them should match, which might not always work. Um, so what we could have done, we could say should match name and then might match alternative names that would probably give us better results. But you know, if you're interested, go read the documentation for Elasticsearch, it's pretty expensive and explains the querying pretty well. So once we execute that, we get the hits and um, you basically get the London first, right? So not, no magic here. I unfortunately 
I don't think I have, uh, yeah, I have not saved the database from the imports and I don't want to rerun import now because it will take some time, but the code is there. Feel free to try it yourself. It's pretty simple once again. Uh, I can tell you that, for example, this collection with 1.33 gigs of um, geonames, it's uh, several, um, I think it's several hundred millions entries and Elasticsearch manages to return results in about 100 milliseconds sorted, ranked and all that stuff. So it's really, really fast. And if you need search, this is probably your best bet. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So these are the two use cases you typically um, apply Elasticsearch for. Um, you could use Solar for at least searching as well because it works uh, very similarly to Elasticsearch. Has some slight difference, obviously, but you know, um, maybe we can have a look at solar at some point later. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below in the video or in our Discord server. Uh, as usual, all the links that I mentioned and showed to you are in the description to this video, as well as this repository on uh, GitHub. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.